your name, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Is this not your typical Wednesday today? How about that? How about that? Is this not a typical Wednesday today? This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice in it. Amen? Amen. How about we came to do business today? How about that? How about that? Lift your hands all over the building. Father, you're so worthy. You're so mighty, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so worthy for who you are. Glory to God. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your presence, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for life, for health, for strength. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome in this place. Move up and down every aisle. You know every story that is in this room. You know every life that is in this room. You know every need that is in this room. So therefore, Father, do exactly what it is you need to do. Holy Spirit, you're welcome to do exactly what is necessary. Thank you for your grace, Lord God. Now, Father, speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind, all of you, Father God, so that there is an eternal impact forever. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing left. Seal the deal today, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here I go. Well, I'm super excited to be here today. How about that? And just a little nervous, okay? I know. So act like, you know, act like we're home, that you're in my living room, and we're just talking. How about that? But even still, I'm just so grateful and so honored. I definitely want to give honor to our pastor, Pastor Creflo and Taffy Dollar. My God, I would definitely not be standing here today. Okay, how about that? I would not be standing here today if it was not for the call of God upon their life, for them being obedient to the call of, uh, upon their life, right? Because I know for, some, for many of us, so many messages that have come off this pulpit, I know for me, has saved my life over and over and over and over again. And then let's not forget about COVID. That Psalm 91 is still hidden. It's still kicking. Some of, some of y'all ain't missed yet from day one. You understand? Raise your hand if you ain't missed yet. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But that, that, that was a time that I think it, it pivoted us on so many levels, but I know in my heart it pivoted me to a place to be still. And, you know, for 27 minutes, when he's on there for 27, 28, 29 minutes, it's like you're just digging in. You're just leaning in. You're just eating, and the day is set. So I'm so grateful for them. I mean, can we give them another hand, our pastors? Glory to God. Well, good morning again. I'm just going to rock and go ahead and share. How about that? I'm super excited. Today I'm talking about the power of B. B-E. Everybody say B-E. B-E. Embracing your true identity. And I think this has been one of the hardest messages for me ever because it's one of the hardest things that I've had to do. Just to be myself just to be able to walk into a room and not be worried about anything else or anybody else, right? Most of the time, I'm the shortest one in the room. How about that? When I was in school, I was the youngest one in the room. I graduated from high school at 15, 16 years old. I went to college at 16 years old. I was the youngest one on my campus. My mom had to write a letter to the dorm mother just so that I could go and walk around on campus at Hampton University. So you know how my life was, right? But it was so encouraging because everybody knew me and everybody took care of me. So hey, today, I'm talking about the power of B. I'm sharing on this, and there's three things ultimately that I want to get out. Being who God has called you to be, standing in that, it positions you in the promises of God. It positions you in the promises of God. It allows you to avoid temptation when the enemy comes for you because you decide to stand in all of who you are and all of who God has called you to be, you don't miss. And then the other thing was that standing in and being all of who God has called you to be, those that you have influence for and those that you have influence over, it causes them to be encouraged and walk in the call of God for them too. So this thing, those small little words, I just wanted to delve into today, right? Because I realized that it was a transformative word. 
It wasn't just simple. It's not just, yeah, well, be that or be this. It's transformative. Even when you speak it, I looked it up in the dictionary. You want to hear? In the dictionary, be is defined as the present infinite of the verb to be. Indicating, now this was the catch, so listen. To be means indicating existence, identity, state of occurrence. It signifies the state of existing or the essence of something. Who knew? In the Bible, the word often refers to be when he talks about a state or a condition. So imagine every time you hear me say be, that means come into what is being said about you. All of who you are. Amen? Here we go. I was first captured by the word be when I began to read Joshua. Joshua 1, starting at 6. And just for the example today, I'm going to use 6 and I'm going to use 9. 7 and 8 is cool, but I'm going to use those two. I was captured by it because listen to what it says in Joshua 1 and 6. Let's look at that in the King James Version. It says, be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swore unto their fathers to give them. I'm going to go back in case you missed it. There was a little article in there, A. For me, things like that for me and the Lord, he just kind of talks to me a little different. Okay, I got blue hair for a reason. Me and God just rock a little different. But it was something about when he said, be of a good courage. He said it above that. He said, be of good courage, be of good courage, be of good courage. Then he says, be of a good courage. So it made me just kind of lean in a little bit, a little bit. Lord, why you say be of a good courage? Because there was something that he was trying to push out. There was something that he was trying to allow me to see, that there was a level, a type to this courage. Right? Because I know for me, it takes everything in me to be who God has called me to be. I'm just letting you know, it's taking everything in me just to stand right here, right now. Amen. Walking through the story of what? A teenage girl where your mom went through dealing with cancer, not just once, but twice. Well, your dad overcame alcohol, so you already know that story, and then came to know Jesus. Huh? Amen. So I'm standing here, yeah, with a lot of story, but deciding every breath that comes out of my mouth to be, I'm talking to myself. Come on, Alyssa, let's go. God has called you to this moment. It's time. Yeah. So I want you to understand what you're looking at. You're looking at be right now. You're watching it move. You're seeing it resonate right now. I'm choosing to say word after word after word. I'm choosing to consistently believe that the words that are coming out of my mouth are straight from heaven above. So let's go back to A courage, huh? I found it curious, like I said, that he said uh, good courage. So I got looking a little deeper. And it wasn't courage to where it was just about bravery which was really interesting to me. It wasn't just about bravery or mere strength. It's a courage, check it, deeply rooted in faith. A courage that comes from knowing that the almighty God is by your side. And then in verse 9, it says, Have not I commanded thee? Say what? Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you, whithersoever you go. That's a call right there. That's a call right there. You know, to be of a good courage. Listen to this. It means to face adversity with unwavering faith. To stand firm in the face of trials. And to move forward with a heart fortified. I'm saying fortified. Look at your neighbor and say fortified with the assurance of God's presence. Like, I know he's showing up right now. I feel the wind in my back right now. That's what it is, to walk in a good courage, to be able to be who God has called you to be. It's not about, and it's not even about not having fear. Because notice when, when I talked in the scripture, it said, be not afraid. So he had to speak to the things that he knew would show up. Alyssa, be not afraid. Okay, walk. Be of good girl. Okay, move. My God, it's about drawing from the reservoir of strength that comes from knowing God intimately, trusting in his promises, and walking in alignment with his will. That means you mean business. 
That means you have to come to a decision in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. Listen to it from the message version. I almost want you to close your eyes. Do that. Close your eyes for a second. Just listen to it in the message version. Strength, courage, you are going to lead the people to inherit the land that I promised to give your ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. Verse 9, haven't I commanded you? Strength, courage, don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step that you take. What? Here, it's like to me when I read that in the version, in the message version, it was like he was speaking to what was on the inside of Joshua. He was not even speaking to the natural man. He was speaking to what he knew he put inside of Joshua. Check it. He said, strength. So that means he's, he's calling upon, hey, I'm calling upon what I recognize. I recognize strength. I recognize courage. Let me call that yeah. so that you can do what you need to do in the natural. I hope you're listening to me. Yeah. Huh. I thought about the fact, you know, we're taught here to find out what is happening during these times when the scriptures are going forth, when we're reading these things. And it's amazing to me the big job that Joshua had in this moment. He didn't just say, Joshua, be of good courage, guy. <laughs> he didn't say, hey, be strong. Because there was so much that was going on in that moment. Joshua had the immense responsibility of leading the Israelites into the promised land. Anybody out there leading some people into a promised land? You? I didn't think so. So think about this now. Why it was so important to understand why he told him and called him into a level of B. Be strong. Be of A, good courage, Joshua. Look at the job that he had for him to do. He was given the task of claiming the land, leading the battles, providing spiritual guidance, and that was a lot of people that he had to do it for. It wasn't no regular Monday. And I'm sure he was feeling overwhelmed which is why the words of encouragement were so amazing. And then you know what I love in Joshua, I'm going to say, go to Joshua 1, 10 to 11. Let's look at that. And I'm reading from the message version. But it was like after he said, hey, be strong, be of good courage, and he pushed all of that into him, and Joshua began to stand in that. Here's what happened to Joshua. He said, then Joshua, check it, then Joshua gave orders to the people's leaders. Here's what was coming out of Joshua's mouth. So imagine this. God gave him the call. God said, hey, Josh, I need you to do this. Hey, Josh, I need you to come on and get these people into the promised land. Hey, Josh, I need you to take care of them while they're over there. Hey, Josh, I need you to keep speaking, speaking my word so we can get them there. And so he began to, that, that word began to, to rise him up. And it said here, it said, then Joshua gave orders to the people's leaders. So Joshua got bold in his call. Joshua, Joshua got bold in what he was asked to do. He said, look, this is Joshua's mouth. Go through the camp, give this order to the people. So he was a boss at that time. He was like, oh, I got this now. He said, he told him, he said, pack your bags, and in three days, we're going to the promised land. What? When he called him, when he pushed that into him, when he declared that to him, it caused him to move in a way. And let, listen, we're still, are we not talking about Joshua today? Oh, my God. Whew. Joshua 1 and 9. Have not I commanded thee? I hope you never listen to that scripture again the same. Be strong and of what kind of courage? What kind of courage? Somebody said it over there. A, hey, good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. To be is a command. Huh? Yeah. It's a command. It, the word didn't say, if your money's right, be. <laughs> it didn't say, if your kids are right, be. Amen. It didn't say, if your marriage is right, then be. The word just said be. Yes. And then after that, if you notice, there's the promises that come after that. Oh, you're catching me. Oh. Embracing your identity in Christ, it also armors you to come against the enemy in the midst of temptation. You might know where I'm going right now. Turn to Matthew 4, 1 through 6. We're going in the King James Version. So we looked at first, B is a positioning. 
and that position puts you in position for the promises of God. When you stand in who all, who all God has called you to be, everything thereafter must follow. It must line up. It must come to pass. Let's look at that, Matthew 4, 1 through 6. It said, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now, just so you know, I like to read the whole story. I'm not going to read every single piece. But there's just something about knowing. I'm a visual person. I want to see what you were doing. I want to be able to walk in my mind what it looked like. So as I'm walking, I know, you know what? It's going to be all right. Here we go. So here's Jesus. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Somebody say he was hungry. hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell those stones to become bread. What? If, are you crazy? If I'm the son of God, I'll punch you in your face. But here's the thing. When the word of God comes to you, what do you say? What are you saying? Do you stand up and say, what? And the enemy says, if you could pay that bill. <laughs> if your mortgage is going to be on time. What? <laughs> If your children go act right, finally. He said, if you are the son of God, which means he was question, causing him to question and doubt his identity. Why are you playing? Don't play with the living God. He was Jesus, but he was the living God simultaneously at the same time. Who do you think you're talking to? And then here was his response. He said, for it is written. For it is written. Say, for it is written. See, that's what you got to come back with. For it is written. For it is written, Dirk Joker, for it is written, he will, he said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Every word, every single word that comes from the mouth of God. Then he had the nerve to mess around and try him again. So here's the thing, what are you doing when people try you? Are you spitting back the word? Or are you like, oh, see, don't try me. Try Jesus, girl. Don't try me. <laughs> are you looking at you while you walk into work? Oh, she tried it. <laughs> are you trying it, girl? Oh, that's what you're doing? OK. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> don't try me. That's what you said. He said, don't try me. He said, listen. Here's the thing. He tried him again. In verse 4, it says, Jesus answered, it is written, I'll see you it again, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of, mouth of God. Verse 5, then the devil took him to the holy city. You know, you got to imagine, you got to see these things. That's why I'm so glad we're taught the way we're taught, right? Go back and look at what's going on. You got Jesus and the devil himself walking. Anybody catching me? What? Oh, my God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God. Somebody say, what? what? Say it like I said it. What? If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. What you talking about? Who are you talking to? Are you catching what's happening? So the devil is walking. We're not just talking about no regular Wednesday. So the devil is walking, right? Yeah, yeah, come on, Jesus. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm the one. <laughs> come on, Jesus. Okay, if you're that son of man, okay, if you're that son of God, go ahead and throw yourself down there, bro. You must be tripping. You got to understand the level of what has happened here. This is why when God says there's nothing that you can go through that I cannot understand. There's nothing so deep that I can't pull you out of. Oh. He says, throw yourself down for it is written. He says, nah, man, here, let me tell you something. He says, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. I like to put the word pebble in there. I won't even trip on a pebble. What? Do you understand what I'm saying? Next time you walk, when you walk on the side of it, and you see that pebble out there, you be like, <laughs> But you also have to compare that to the things in your life. Yeah. Those pebbles, when they, you know, the things that seem like big boulders, big stones, if you now turn that thing, oh, that's a pebble. Say your name, but that's a pebble. 
because the promise is already given me. Hey, I won't even, it, nothing will even occur. The power of God is already present. Everything that I need is in place. I won't even, and look, just like the three human boys, I won't even come out smelling like smoke. What? Man, let's roll. Embracing identity with confidence when challenged, here's what it was. Jesus affirmed his identity. When he spoke the words of his father, 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 huh? Jesus affirmed his identity, standing firm and resolute. His response just wasn't just about resistance. It was an affirmation of who he was empowering him to stay on that path. Because at any moment, he could have come off. He could have been like, uh-uh. You know what? Let Anthony handle whatever he got to handle by himself. I'm out. Do you understand? In that moment, that was for me. That was for you. Now, let me stay on this path. Let me stay on path. Alyssa's coming through. Ha! On, on December 13th, 2023, to walk in the call of God, let me stay on this path, because she's coming through. Because there's a word in her mouth, there's a destiny that has to come to pass. Let me stay on this path. Devil, it is written. So every it is written was for you. So that every promise could come to pass. Are you hearing me? Walking confidently in our identity, embracing who we are, means that we understand our value. There's no questioning. You know, people, you know, and we've all done it. Who am I? What has God called me to do? What is my purpose? If you say that one more time, say it again. Say, say it again. I will come for you. Don't it seem crazy now to even say that, to even think that? Say it again, see what happens. See what happens. See if I don't go for you. What is my purpose? Are you kidding me? What if in that moment when Jesus and the enemy were walking and he said to himself, in that moment if he said, well, wait a second, devil. What is my purpose? When that bill comes, in that moment is not to say, what is my, I am, I will be all God, who has God called me to be, everything that I need is taken care of, it is written. That's what it looks like. Huh. Remember when Jesus was faced with the trials in the wilderness, he exhibited this kind of courage that I spoke about at the beginning. He didn't waver when the adversity challenged his identity. He stood firm. Anchored is in, in his relationship with God the Father. That's the moment that is supposed to kick in. Oh, I remind, I'm reminded of who I am. I'm reminded of who he called me to be and how he called me to do it. This kind of courage, here's the part, is transformative. That's why it's important for you to walk in, me, to walk in, talking to myself right now, Come with me in my thoughts. Important for you, Alyssa, to walk in all that God has called you to, to be who God has called you to be in the way that he called you to do it. Oh. This kind of courage is transformative. Listen, it empowers us to overcome challenges, to burst, persevere in our faith, and to stand tall amidst the storms of life. Hmm. Understanding our worth and purpose when we reflect on those passages, John 1 and 6 and verse 9, it literally blows up the significance of understanding and embracing who you are in Jesus Christ. We're called, like Jesus, to stand tall in our true selves, drawing strength from the certainty of who we are in him. And you know what? I needed to see it for myself. I needed to see him moving in his thing. That's just me. I just wanted to see. And it came alive to me in John 7, 1 through 36. And I'm going to read it in the message version. As we go there, I want you to understand that Jesus gave an example of a profound sense of knowing who he was. He spoke with conviction about what he wouldn't do. 
So let's read it. I'm going to read all the way through. Now, I'm going to read it in my way, if that's okay. Y'all ready? In verse 7, it says, Later, Jesus was going about his business in Galilee. He didn't want to travel in Judea because the Jews were there looking for him for a chance to kill him. It was near the time of tabernacles, a feast observed annually by the Jews. His brother said, why don't you leave here and go up to the, to the feast so your disciples can get a look at the works you're doing? No one who intends to be publicly known does everything behind the scene. So they're trying to be like, hey, you know what? Why don't you go out there? Let everybody see what you're doing. Be out in the public. If you're serious, here's another if. Here's another if. Here's another questioning him on who he is. If you're serious about what you are doing, come out in the open and show the world. His brothers were pushing him like that because they didn't believe in him either. What? Verse 9. He said, no, let me go back. This is the part. This is the part right here. This is where I was like, Jesus, I was a fan before, but I'm a more of a fan even now. Jesus came back at them. I love the language and message because it sounds like me. It says, Jesus came back at them. Don't pressure me. <laughs> like, don't try to, look, back up, get off me. So here, look at what was happening. He was like, hey, he's walking with his boys. Hey, Jesus, you know what? You the man. Everybody talk about you, you feel what I'm saying? Like, why don't you come on out in the front? Get on social media. Get on that IG. You know what I'm saying? Get that social media campaign up, bro. <laughs> he said, don't pressure me. This isn't my time. Who? <laughs> he said, it's your time. You go, bro. It's always your time. You have nothing to lose. When you're worried about where you are, whether you're being who you're supposed to be, and it seems quiet, don't worry about it. You'll have your time. He said, the world has nothing against you, but it's up in arms against me. You go ahead. He said, it's against me because I expose the evil behind his pretensions. That's what we're here for in case nobody told you. That's why sometimes it takes one year, two years, three years, five years, 20 years, whatever year it takes for God to cook what's on the inside of you. And when it's your time, you will be able to what? Expose the evil behind the devil's pretensions. <laughs> Stop playing with me. He said, you go ahead, go up to the feast. Don't wait for me. I'm not ready. It's not the right time for me. He said, in verse 9, he said this. He said it, and he stayed on in Galilee. But later, after his family had gone up to the feast, he also went. But here's what he said. He said, but he kept out the way. <laughs> he kept out the way. That sounds like how I, I would say. Yeah, he kept out the way. careful not to draw attention to himself. The Jews were already looking out for him, asking around, where's that man? Huh? Where is he? There was a lot of contentious talk about him circulating through the crowds. Some were saying, he's a good man, but others said, not so. He's selling snake oil. This kind of talk went on in guarded whispers because of the intimidating Jewish leaders. There's a lot of talk about you going on. There was a lot of talk about me going on. At one point in my life, my whole life was on social media. I was like, Lord, why don't you just take me right now? Why don't you just come through? I'm good. My mama, you got my mama. You got my dad. You know what I'm saying? You got my best friend. Why don't you just come get me? I'm good. That thing almost took me out. When your life is plastered with lie after lie after lie after lie, what? Oh, my God. I said, I said, God, come, come take me right now. Because there's people tripping. But it was the, the only way that I got out of that, and it was a dark place. Say dark place. dark place. The only way that I got out of that dark place is I had to come to myself. I had to, wait a minute, I had to, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I had to be who God called me to be. I had to figure out, listen, I am who God says I am. I am a person of truth. I am a person of honor. I I walk way, the way God called me to walk. I am who God called me to be. And I say things the way he tells me to say them. And you know what? After that, my mind started getting clear because I began to look towards the Father and less toward them. He said, you know what? Let them figure out how you walking in your car. Let them figure that out. And while they figuring it out, you go ahead and be. I 
i.e., I'm standing here right now. What? Oh, God. Oh, God. He said, with the feast, I'm on 14. He said, with the feast already half over, Jesus showed up in the temple, teaching the Jews were, Jews were impressed but puzzled. How does he know so much without going to school? How does he know so much if she ain't been to seminary? The Holy Ghost, yes. the living God, yes. the pressure of life and me having to trust the living God and that pressure being squeezed out and because the word of God is on the inside of me, what's coming out is the word of God. <sighs> Jesus said, I didn't make this up. Well, on 16, what I teach comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who wants to do his will can test this teaching and know whether it's from God or whether I'm making it up. Then he schooled them again. He said, a person making things up tries to make himself look good. You didn't, you didn't see that before either, right? And I know, I know. When I saw it, I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> oh, snap. He said, but someone here, but someone trying to honor the one who sent him sticks to the facts and doesn't temper with reality. The reality is, I am who God says that I am. I walk in the way that he's called me to walk. The word of God is the final reality. That's it. That's all. He said, but someone trying to honor the one who sent him sticks to the facts and doesn't temper with reality. And then, he, look, he's checking them. He said, it was Moses, wasn't it, who gave you God's law? But none of you are living it. <laughs> so why are you trying to come for me? He said, so why are you trying to kill me? He said, the crowd, the crowd said, oh, you crazy. See, that's what people, then they, then, they, then they act like they ain't say what they really say. You said it. You know you said it. You was talking about me. You was coming for me. You was trying to take me out. Oh, man, you tripping. We was not. That ain't true. Who told you that? You said it. The crowd say, you crazy. Who's trying to kill you? You demon possessed. See, then people will try to make you think that your mind. What? No, no, no. My mind is clear. The Holy Spirit got me right. I'm on track. I know what this is. I see you. <sighs> Jesus said, I did one miraculous thing a few months ago, and you still standing around getting all upset, wondering what I'm up to. Moses prescribed circumcision. Originally, it came not from Moses, but from his ancestors. And so you circumcise a man dealing with one part of his body, even if it's the Sabbath. You do this in order to preserve one item in the law of Moses. So why are you upset with me? Because I made a whole man's body whole on the Sabbath day. Here's what he said. Don't be hypocritical. Here's the piece that, that got it for me. He said, don't be hypocritical. Use your head and your heart to discern what is right to test what is authentically right. That's the power of being. When you are able to walk in who God has called you to be, he said, you'll be able to call things a spade as a spade. You'll be able to say that's right and that's wrong. And not only that, you'll be able to look at that thing and see whether it's authentic or not. So that means what? That means I don't miss. That may, and, 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 it's, and it's not a big head thing. It just is what it is. I'm not going to miss. Just being who God has called you to be allows you to be firm in your identity, even in the midst of temptations. Jesus displayed an unshakable sense of self-awareness and purpose. Jesus gave the example the, of the importance of discernment, harmonizing your thoughts and your emotions, because in those moments, how about his thoughts and his emotions were going wild? But the whole goal was he was able to discern what is authentic. He was able to come back and give God's word. He was able to respond like God responds. He was able to respond like God the Father responds. Embracing your identity in Christ and being who God has called you to be, it will give opportunity, direction, and insight for those you have influence with to walk in their call. I hope you're hearing me. When you walk in who God has called you to be, when you decide to just be, those that are watching you, those that are coming up, those that are standing, those that are ahead of you, you know, they may even have to look back. But definitely those who are coming, 
as they watch you, even though you may go shaking, they watching. And so they figure, so then, then they can say, hey, she went shaking, I'm going to go. Hey, Taffy Dollar. <laughs> from this stage, before it looked this cool, from this stage, I watched her shaking her boots, coming up here. Hey, hi, good morning. <laughs> to now when she exhort the word on Sunday, give the living word of God. She, she th bust the devil in the head every Sunday morning. Because she made a decision to walk in who God called her to be. Oh my God, come on, we're almost done. What? But here's the thing, because she did that, I was able to check her. You better believe I was checking her. I wasn't, look, I wasn't parking on nobody's pulpit at that time, but I was like, oh, okay, that's how you do that? Okay, girl, all right. In the news, every time, I was able to refer back, when I was in the news, right, the, the social news, I was able to refer back Oh, he came on that pulpit every Sunday. And he told you what it was. Hey, this is what it is. This is what happened. And this is where we're going. Now pray. Hey, let's go. And kept on with the word. Yeah. Oh, that's how you do that? Mm -hmm. When the church was building, and we were, he was building and looking for us to get out of debt, I was like, oh, that's how you do that? Oh, you stretch your hands? Oh, you get all your bills? You better believe when it was 250 Saratoga Toga Street, we had this little, little basket huh, praying, in the name of Jesus, we'd be debt free in Jesus' name. Had they not continued to be who they were called to be, where would many of us be? Had he decided, I remember part of his testimony, make sure I'm saying it right, that he was in the car, right, with the gas on, wanting to take his life. Oh, my God. What if he didn't come to himself in that moment? Where would many of us be? Huh? It was on this stage that I, I, I married my husband. And we're still moving strong. You understand? Amen. You got to see and understand how your life connects so strongly. It's important for you to stand. I'm going to close with this part right here. As I was preparing, at one point, it was like I was getting a download of people who had shaped my life. Just like Dr. Dahl, I'm, I'm watching him. <laughs> Pastor Daphne, I'm, I'm watching her. <laughs> Pastor Carol, oh, I'm watching her. Oh, okay, girl. All right. Oh, the oh, all right, girl. Oh, you just gonna slay the people on the floor like that? <laughs> oh, oh, you just gonna pray? Shake it, don't land on me. Rub it, it. Oh, you just gonna break out in the middle of your sermon? Rub it, shake it. And the Lord of us say, "Koto Roma, inda ete hepa hora heke hepa." Sometimes her prayer be like a song. Rebebe shondala, erebebo sete heke kera tara eraba, and I be right. But listen, it allowed me to be free. Yeah. Ah. Ah. She was that one that when my, when my mom died, right? I remember I was in so much pain. I was like, Lord, take me out. Take me out. Here we go. Here we go again. She was like, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. I don't know if she remembered this care too. Went, ate some lunch. And I remember being in so much pain. I remember asking her, because I was a leader at that time, and I remember asking her, where do the leaders go? Who, who do we talk to? And she just, just looked, looked at me, just eating her food. <laughs> All right, baby, come on. And then look, we went and bought towels and washcloths. But it ministered to me so strong because the fact is that she was, be and I don't know what was going on in her life. Obviously, there probably was something going on in her life. But in that moment, she decided to be who God calls her to be, and she walked with me. Oh, God. Oh, God! She walked with me. I'm telling you, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. Oh, my God. <laughs> and let, let, me, let me tell you this part before we go. And like I said, I thought about the people that have lived and continue to be who they've called you to be. They sit in this room right now. Sister Elnora, she don't, I don't know if she remember, but it was back there when we had pews. I was recently married. I was recently married. And my husband, before he was who he is right now, because he's so powerful, the Jesus that he serves, the way he speaks right now, I want to go, can I have your Jesus? Because <laughs> it flipped on me. But let me tell you where it flipped. Back there, probably where you're sitting in that white shirt right there. 
because my husband was the type, when he first came, straight New Yorker, while Dr. Dollar was up here preaching, my husband would be the one sure, yeah, but what about this? Oh, see, he, uh, see what I'm saying? See, oh, and I'm like, dude, I'm trying to hear what he's talking about. Because we got to go back home together. You understand what I'm saying? Can I get that? He's like, yeah, but. But it was that one day, Sister Elnora, right there, just being who she is, she just turned when it was at the time of the, she just turned. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? <laughs> messed him up. They went to that room when it was the prayer room across the, across the way. Messed him up. <laughs> See, because what he didn't know was that he, that he had a new wife in the bathroom. Robeshe, <laughs> Lord, please help me, God. Rogadishe, K, help me, Father, in the sick Send your word. Send somebody. Send help. <laughs> So look, that baptism of the Holy Spirit, God bless you, thank you. Appreciate you for that. He, he got that baptism of the Holy Spirit. He ain't never been the same yet. <laughs> I see it in my own home with my own children, right? Embracing their identity in Christ and becoming more and more comfortable in their relationship with Christ. First of all, they got youth pastors. God bless them, I see your youth pastors. <laughs> You know they've been here since they was 11 years old, right? You know they used to run around, run around, run around, run around, run around this church? God only knows some of the things they was running around doing. But it doesn't matter. Here he sits. Here he sits. Former drug dealer. And he was a top dog boy, were you not? Top, 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 top boy. His name's still in the streets. Google him. <laughs> he knows I love him. But here's the thing. Him deciding to turn, get off the drugs, get out of the street, him deciding to turn. Who knew 16 years later my daughter would sit with him and she would glean from his words and she would live her life and she would try it out and she would hear God's word. Let me tell, let me tell you what happened. Oh, God. So they've been studying praise and worship, right? And they've been studying the Holy Spirit, and they've been studying different things. How about you got a youth ministry that teaches children the Word of God? So one day, one day, right? You know how everybody got the family chat, and I'm going to push this out to you. We got a family chat. So I look in the family chat, and it's my daughter, right? Sometimes we talk, and you know, some, usually I'm sending scriptures to them. Lord, please let them read it. <laughs> God. <laughs> this last Wednesday to the day. To the day today, Doc. Wow. To the time today. The scripture came. 16-year-old, sitting under the word of God, watching her youth pastors, watching her parents walk out God in front of them. Amos 9, 13 to 15, you might want to turn there. It says, this is the prayer she put in the chat. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people, Israel. They'll rebuild their ruined cities. They'll plant vineyards and drink good wine. They'll work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. And I'll plant them, plant them on their own land. They'll never again be uprooted from the land that I have given them. God, your God, says so. Then on the way to school, then on the way to school that morning, she had a whole play playlist of just praise and worship. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Being who God has called you to be and those that you have influence over will cause them to be comfortable in the things of God and walk in the things of God and come into the destiny that God has for them. Yeah. Be people, be. Yeah. Oh. So we're closing to that. I just want us to recognize the profound power within the word be, how it intertwines to our identity. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Stand firm, stand firm, embrace your purpose and let your life radiate the authenticity of who you truly are. I pray that you got something out of this today, amen? amen. Woo! My God, my God. Woo! Yeah, 
Shara. That was just my worship. That was just my praise. That was just my worship. You've given me today. Oh, here is now my worship. Here is now my praise. My God. I give you all my worship. Because you've given me today. Oh, God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this moment, let's go ahead and finish our worship. And I want to, let's go ahead and take up our offering. I know we're moving, but let's just move in that, in that vein. This is the opportunity to complete your worship if you need to give at this time. And you know, we give in a response to who God is to us, right? Because of who he is, we say, God, I trust you. So here is what I have. And there's several ways on the screen. If you're online, there's several ways that you can give. You can text it to 74483, world changers, plus the amount. Or you can call it in. The number's there on the screen. Or you can mail it in. Or that email is on there. You can go ahead and send it that way. Hallelujah. You can raise your hand if you need an offering envelope in the building. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoo. Whoo. Worship God with your offering, amen, in response to him. And you can give on the way out as you do that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank God for our ushers, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, I know, look, and right there, she's another one. She don't even know. She would get me right, all the way right. When you, look, she was that usher. No, sit over here. Okay? Because Dr. Dollar believes in order. And she didn't have to say it, but she still did it with love. She was like. And I'd be like. That's when I used to come to church in Tim's and hoodies. My, my husband and I were straight from New York, but she got me all the way right. Praise God for our ushers. Amen. I'm going to pray over our offering. Father God, thank you so much for the seed that has been sown. We declare that it is blessed, that it will go and grow in Jesus' name. Amen. And before we go, and for those of you that are online, we will be remiss not to offer you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you've never said, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Father, I repent. I believe that I'm, I know that I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Save me. I believe that you died on the cross, that you rose again. I want you to be my God. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that for the first time, we want you to do something. Text the word, I'm saved, I am S A V E D, to 51555, all one word. And we want to send you a special gift so that you continue the walk of God after having prayed that prayer. Can you give them a big hand for those of you, them that have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Well, listen, I'm through. Let's stand to our feet. We're about to receive this blessing. Amen. Amen. This ain't no regular Wednesday. Listen, lift your hands all over the building. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the Almighty God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. Amen.